Have all of you suffered from a TEDx overdose now? <laughs> One of the most ridiculous questions that I get to hear from many people at different times is, who is superior, a man or a woman? The idea of gender discrimination, it frustrates me. It baffles me, and at times, it really makes me sad. So there's almost a divine irony in the fact that I was born in Rajasthan, which is Northwest India. Um, it's known for, it's, it's a beautiful place with rich culture, um, colors, and history. But the sad thing is that a lot of people decided to stick with a lot of damaging traditions. And one of the most damaging from them is the idea that a woman has a very belittling place in society. I go to villages and one of the things I see there is 10, 12 year old girls who are playing outside their house. Except a few months later when I go there, I don't see them. And so I asked somebody, I said, what happened to them? And I said, well, you know, they've attained puberty now, so they're not going to be allowed to step out of the house. And I see eight-year-old girls getting married. And marriage is not always a solution as well. It's not always a guarantee that your life will now turn out to be okay. So this notion, which is not just an Indian thing, I see it outside India as well, that the dignity of a family or society lies on the shoulders of women while a man can get away with absolutely anything, I find it very, very humiliating sometimes. So all these ideas put together come, uh, sort of came together to me when I was growing up. So I grew up in Dubai, and I live in London now. And when I was growing up, I learned something. I learned that we can have two realities, two different realities, and I learned that they can coexist. And some people have more than two realities, which is fine, I guess it works for them. But I realized that I was not okay with these realities being completely separate. I wanted to find a way to bridge them. I wanted one to transcend to another. So my journey took me to in, to back to India. At the age of 26, three years ago, did you notice how nicely I put my age in there, making me look young? <laughs> so, so three years ago, I went back to India, and I wanted to answer this question. What is the meaning to my life? I have the luxury to travel to, to education. Um, what is the point of all of this? And I started doing work in the field of education. When I was doing that, I thought, what if we do a TEDx event? in the village. It will be really fascinating. I've been to TED events, and I love the whole atmosphere. It's fabulous. And I was thinking that, can this work in a village? Can we get the same feeling that all of you are feeling here today? Can I get the same thing in a rural context? So I was in this idealistic trance, and I thought, you know, you want to do something good for people? They're going to welcome you. So in 2010, I decided I want to organize a TEDx event. My TEDx event is called TEDx Sheikh Havati. So I started running into problems. And some of them, things that I got to hear was, because you're a woman organizing this event, so it's a bad thing. It is against our religion. And uh, you are corrupting the social fabric, the moral fabric of our society. And after all of that, after working on this for like a year, seven days before the event, they finally say, okay, how do we stop her? So they tell me, if you want to go on stage, you will have to wear a niqab to cover your face. And I said, no, because I wear the burqa, I wear this for myself, I don't wear it for other people. And I don't like the idea of wearing a niqab on stage and talking to the same people without it. So after I refused, they said, well, we're taking away the venue, we're not going to let you do the event in that venue. So I had 300 people, had speakers coming in, and I didn't have a place for them. And so in a couple of days, I managed to organize another ground. And by then, I was so demotivated that I thought, I'll have 20 people. It's OK. We'll just have a nice time. And on the day of the event, we had 1,200 people who came for this conference. <laughs> And
And so the next year, 2011, I thought this time I'll pick a school. And I took a school which is a school for Harijans. Harijans are the untouchable people in India. They're not untouchable because they've got an illness or something, but because they come from the lowest caste. So they're stuck in the cycle of poverty. They can never get out of it. They're denied education as well. So that school is almost 100 years old, and it has slowly become a school where poor children go. So when I went to the school, this was one of the classrooms in the school. What we did with that school, I think, I mean, I went to that school recently, and I could not recognize it's the same school. We built toilets, so finally, there were toilets in the school after 100 years. Um, we painted the school, and on the day of the event, I remember, we had 5,000 people who came for this Tarek Sheikh Havati. Some of the really good outcomes from this was, the first one was youth leadership, to groom youth leadership in villages. So what I did was I had an idea of the event, what I wanted it to be like, and took a guy and a girl who I've taught through my other education initiatives, and I told them, this is the work that needs to be done, now you do it your way. And they went and they made teams and sub-teams, and they, Basically, what this event looks like was created by them. And so the women, they went house to house telling people about the event, because we don't have social media, and people don't really completely rely on newspapers. And so the women uh, you know, went to the beauty parlor, and then they spoke to the main lady there. And so when she was threading the eyebrows, she was like, so have you heard of Tarek Sheikh Havati? And, and so that's how everybody got to hear about the event. Um, there was a woman who came to me um, after the conference and she said, you know, I'm so impressed that I have enrolled five of my daughters in a school. And uh, one of my favorite moments actually is one of our speakers, she spoke about uh, women's rights. Um, sorry, that's a school. That's what it looked like from outside. And so one of her speakers, she spoke about women's rights and the place of a woman in society. And uh, I didn't have any woman who came to me and said, uh, you know, that's really good. And I had so many guys and so many men who came to me and said, you know, I'm so glad that had to be said. And so when I look at all of this, I feel that Tarek Shekhawati is, it's just the beginning. To change a mindset that is hundreds of years old is very, very difficult. It's not easy. And it's not going to change in two years. But what Tarek Shekhawati has done is that it is a window of change to not only the incredible changes happening in India, but around the world. And I feel very stubborn in bringing this to my people, to my community. A lot of people ask me that, you know, how did you do this? How did you face all these problems? And, you know, when I look back, I have just one, and that's my true answer. And I tell them that, what you are seeing is the opposition and the problems. But when I was there, I couldn't see them. The only thing that I could see was, at a, was a time when people were happy, they were positive, and they were open-minded. And I feel after everything, eventually this is what makes all the difference. Thank you.